Hey, Steve Stratsky here. Welcome back to the show. Lots to touch on this week. We've got some updates from the Bank of Canada. We've got some movement in the bond market. We've got some really important data of what's happening in the labor market. Now we've got some updates on the Vancouver housing market uh, heading into what is supposed to be a very important and busy fall selling season. So we're going to unpack that. We're going to unpack all of that because I think it's really, really important here moving forward. But you have to frame things up with the big guy in the room, Tiff Macklem, cutting rates by 25 basis points. So that's the third cut. It's the third cut. We've now we're now 75 basis points lower since this rate cutting cycle began. All the doomsdayer guys that were in the YouTube comment section here over the last three, six, nine, twelve months saying rates are never going down. You know, we're going to 10 percent interest rates. Everyone's going to lose their homes. Okay, you can all quiet down now. We've got 75 basis points of cut. More are coming. We had inflation. It was really, really bad. It was a 40-year high. The damage has clearly been done, but we're now going through a period of disinflation. Rates are coming lower. The economy is weak. People are losing their jobs. We're going through a period of disinflation. Rates are going to continue to move lower. So what does this mean for the housing market moving forward? Well, let's click to Tiff Macklem's comment right here. You know, it wouldn't be surprising as, as interest rates come down, as activity in the housing market strengthens, uh, you see some pickup in housing prices. We're not, you know, we, we don't publish a detailed projection of housing prices. Um, but, you know, that could well happen. But with mortgage rates coming down, hopefully uh, with more supply coming into the rental market, with some reduction in population growth, you should see rent prices come down. So when I say you know, overall shelter price inflation can come down. I'm not saying that that means house prices are coming down. House prices could well actually pick up a bit uh, with overall in inflation in shelter price still coming down. So Tiff Macklem's getting all bulled up for the next big bull market in housing, uh, talking about home prices potentially rising in the, in the near future. Uh, he sounds like pretty much every other seller that I'm talking to in the Vancouver housing market here. Everyone is all bulled up thinking, you don't even know who Jeff Macklem is. They're just reading the CBC News article headline saying rates down and it must mean home prices up. Uh, but I want to really emphasize here some important things. This is where I really want to push back. Yeah, rates are down. It's great. You know, if you're borrowing a mortgage, your stress test is lower, uh, you're able to qualify for more. It's easing that burden, right? But your variable rate mortgage is still, which is what the bank account influence, is this still about 5.5% today. So even if you get another 50 basis points by year end, your variable is going to be 5%. The bond market's moving, okay? You got the bond market's moving lower yields, the five-year bond yield at 2.8% now, so that we haven't seen since the spring of 2023. We've got clients locking in three-year fixed rate mortgages today at about 43 4.4%. It's a big difference. It's a big change from what it used to be at one point, you know, 12 months ago. People were boring at 6, 6.1, 6.2. This is a big change. But the challenge is, is that the labor market stinks. Why are we cutting rates? We're cutting rates because the economy is in a per capita recession. Uh, the labor market, um, you know, it's the unemployment rate just jumped to 6.6%. Okay, so we're up. 1.8 percentage points from the low. That's recessionary. That is what a recession starts to look like, the unemployment rate going higher, okay? And so what we're doing is we're cutting rates because the economy stinks. Don't tell that to the finance minister who's talking about this being such a great thing. Um, when rates are lower, you still need people that are going to go in there and borrow money. They need to have confidence. They need to have confidence in the economy. They need to have confidence in their job. And so as people start to lose, their neighbors start losing their jobs, there's a lot less confidence overall. Consumer confidence is not that great. And so this is why I'm saying don't just necessarily get hyped up that just because you get lower rates today instantly means that you're in the next housing bull market. Um, again, the unemployment rate pushing higher this week to 6.6%. The number of unemployed Canadians... Okay, those those that have been unemployed for 27 weeks or longer is surging higher. Okay, so we're adding all these people into the country, but we're not adding enough jobs for them. It's taking people longer to find jobs and people that are losing their jobs. Again, it's being harder and harder to replace those. And so that ultimately feeds into, voila, the rental market. Okay, so when you get 
when you get a spike higher in rents, right? When rents are pushing higher, it's typically a function of the labor market, right? If the labor market is super tight and wages are rising higher, people are able that that gets pushed through into the rental market because people start paying more and more for rents. And that's why we've seen over the last 12 months or so, we're seeing that rents have plateaued in the vast majority of these metropolitan cities. In real time, rents have peaked. And in some cases, they're declining. You know, you get the Globe and Mail article this week showing that, oh, so all of a sudden, rents are declining near Canadian universities. And that coincides with the recession that I think that we're in, the weakness in the labor market, and the reduction in foreign students. Of course, the changes at the federal government level to reduce the level of immigration through foreign international students coming into these cities and universities and pushing rents higher. So you've got this combination of, yes, the Bank of Canada is cutting rates, but the economy is crap, the labor market stinks, and so there's not a lot of confidence. And so I think we're entering into this fall market that's supposed to be really, really busy. I think, yeah, you'll get some transactions picking up. Sales will pick up off of what are like, you know, sales in Greater Vancouver are 20, 25, 26% below the long term 10 year average. So they're going to pick up off a very, very low base. And, but new listings are also picking up. So, net, net, uh, I think you're in for a period of stagnation. And that's really what we've seen is stagnation in the Greater Vancouver housing market. Um, if you look at the home price index across Greater Vancouver, all property types, it's it's down. We're down one percent over the past twelve months. Pretty flat, pretty boring, pretty stagnant housing market. Sales are crap. They're terrible. Uh, but prices have been relatively flat. They've been sticky. They're down one percent, which is really not that bad considering how much rates have moved from the peak. From the peak, the home price index is down five percent. So. Again, really not that bad. You've got pockets of the market that have been crushed, right? If you bought a pre-sale near the peak of the market and you're closing on it, yeah, you're taking a huge bath. You've got a bunch of negative cash flow investors. Those guys are getting hurt. You know, you've got people that overpaid in multiple offer bidding wars in the far-flung suburbs um, where everybody rushed out there during the pandemic. Like if you bought at the peak in the suburbs, yeah, you're probably down 15 plus percent. So there's pockets of the market that have really gotten hurt, but at the broader market, the broader market overall, it, it really hasn't moved that much. It's a relatively flat and benign market. So I think that's important when you put things overall into context. So again, I just want to caution everyone moving forward. We're in the important spring market, okay? So like if you're a, what we're seeing right now is we're seeing all these sellers are starting to reposition properties. AKA, if you didn't sell in the summer months, summer's typically a harder time to sell. It hasn't been a great housing market. We all we all know that. We just walked you through the data. So you come back on in the fall. The fall is consists of September, October, part of November. It's typically like the busy selling season, okay? It's where you get a little bit more churn and turnover. You get more listings but you get more sell, sales. So if you're going to sell, if you're stale in the summer, your next chance to sell is in the fall market. You basically have two and a half months to move your product. Otherwise, you head into December and January, which are historically very, very slow months as people take off for the holidays, et cetera, et cetera. So people are now repositioning properties. They're, they're taking, they take them off the market at the end of the summer. They list them back in the fall, typically at a new lower price to try to move product in the fall. And so this is where I caution people. Yeah, again, rates are down, but keep in mind the economy is weak and we still have a lot of listings. There's still a lot of people that didn't sell in the summer that are bringing properties back onto market and they're going to push hard. They're going to push harder. The ones that want to and need to move, they're going to push harder in the fall because they got two and a half months to capitalize on the market before you enter those really slow winter months and you're basically waiting till almost mid-February until the housing market starts picking up once again as you enter into that spring selling season. So um, suffice to say, I, I don't think the pain is over yet. Um, there's a difference when rates are being cut and they're low and the economy is accelerating, right? 
You guys know how bullish I was on this channel during the heights and depths of the pandemic when the data was evidently clear that the Bank of Canada left rates for too low for too long, that the housing market was accelerating higher, basically uh, into central bank easing. Central banks were easing as the housing market was accelerating. And so it was very, and, and as the labor market was tightening and getting stronger and stronger and stronger, they were easing into that, okay? Today, they're easing into an economy and a housing market that is still weakening. So it's, 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 it's you're basically pulling a U-turn in a cruise ship. It's gonna take time to turn around. And so that's kind of my view. Uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of sellers that naively believe rate cuts mean immediate success and a quick turnaround and into a bull market. And I still think when you look at the data of what's happening in the labor market, it's quite clear that uh, we're not out of the woods yet. And that there's going to be more easing from the Bank of Canada moving forward. I think that much is certain. So as always, hope that helped. I'll see you next week.